The three worst judgments of the book of Revelation. Number one, seals. The seven seals, Revelation 6 to 16, cover Satan on earth. The seven seals are part of God's final judgments. Revelation 6 verses 1 to 17 details the seals. The action begins in Revelation chapter 5 with the search for someone in heaven and on earth, someone worthy of breaking the seals and opening the scroll. The seven seals in heaven, according to John's vision, hold a scroll. And as each seal is broken, a new judgment is unleashed upon the world. John writes, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. The scroll includes God's judgments. No one was judged worthy to break the seals and unlock the scroll, which saddened John. If the scroll could not be opened, evil would not be judged, and evil would continue to plague the earth. As John weeps over the unopened scroll and its seven intact seals, he receives excellent news. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. This is a representation of Jesus Christ, the slain Lamb, who is also the Lion of Judgment. As Jesus takes the scroll to open the seals and deliver judgment to the unbelieving world, the beings in heaven glorify him with a new song. Revelation 5 verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open its seals, for you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe, language, people, and nation. John 5 verse 22, Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. The Lamb begins to open the seals amidst the worship due to him. The scroll can be unrolled a bit more with each seal opened, exposing the judgments that God has reserved for the time of tribulation, bit by bit. The first four of the seven seals open, releasing what are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse, because the judgments appear metaphorically as a horse and rider, leaving destruction in their path. The first seal, Revelation 6, verses 1 and 2, and when the Lamb opened one of the seals, I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. The second seal, a great war, breaks out in the world when the Lamb releases the second seal. This is represented by a rider on a fiery red horse, wielding a great sword. Revelation 6 verses 3 and 4, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. The fiery red horse of the second seal represents chaos following the initial period of peace that precedes the tribulation. The world will degenerate into violence, with people trying to destroy each other. The third seal, famine, results from the breaking of the third of the seven seals, Revelation 6, verses 5 and 6. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. The fourth seal. When the fourth seal is broken, John sees a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades followed close behind. As a result of the fourth seal, a quarter of the world's population is killed by sword, famine, and pestilence, as well as by the wild beasts of the earth. Revelation 6 verses 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now that you've done that, let's get to the video. The Fifth Seal the fifth seal of the scroll indicates those who would be martyred throughout the tribulation for their faith in Christ. Revelation 6 verses 9 to 11. 
When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been martyred for the word of God and for remaining faithful in their testimony. They cried out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers, who were to be killed as they had been, was completed. The Sixth Seal When the Lamb of God breaks the sixth seal, a great earthquake occurs, causing massive destruction and extraordinary astronomical phenomena. The sun turns black as sackcloth, the moon becomes red as blood, and the heavens recede like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved from their places. Revelation 6, verses 12 to 14. I watched as the Lamb opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black as sackcloth, and the moon became like blood. Then the stars of heaven fell to the earth, like unripe figs falling from a fig tree, shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Survivors of the sixth seal, regardless of their social status, seek shelter in caves and call to the mountains and rocks. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? A pause in the book of Revelation follows the opening of six of the seven seals. The seventh seal, Revelation 8, verse 1. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. The judgments that led to the end of the tribulation are now evident in the scroll, and they are so severe that all of heaven falls silent. The seventh seal clearly announces the beginning of the next round of judgments, as John immediately sees seven angels with seven trumpets ready to sound. An eighth angel takes a censer and burns much incense, indicating the petitions of God's people. Revelation 8 verse 5 Then the angel filled the censer with fire from the altar and hurled it to the earth, and there were peals of thunder, voices, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. When the judgments of the seven seals are completed, the second phase of the tribulation, which includes the judgments of the seven trumpets, will begin. The seven trumpets in Revelation, chapters 8 and 9, John describes a time close to the end of the world when angels will sound seven trumpets. Each trumpet heralds the arrival of a new round of judgments upon the peoples of the earth. The seven trumpets are described in Revelation 8 and 9, as well as in Revelation 11 verses 15 to 19. The trumpets represent disasters. The judgments announced by the seven trumpets will occur during the tribulation period, at the end of the world. Seven angels who stand in the presence of God are given seven trumpets, which will be used to trigger another round of judgments. The first trumpet, Revelation 8 verse 7, The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down upon the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. This plague destroys a third of the world's trees and consumes all the grass. This judgment bears some resemblance to the seventh plague of Egypt. The second trumpet, Revelation 8, verses 8 and 9. Then the second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a large mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. In heaven a second angel sounds a trumpet, and the result is that something like a huge mountain, all in flames, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea transforms into blood, a third of the ships sink, and a third of ocean life dies. This judgment is somewhat similar to the first plague of Egypt. Revelation 8 verses 10 and 11. Then the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. It fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. It made a third of the waters bitter, and many people died from drinking the bitter water. The judgment of the third trumpet is similar to the second, except it affects the world's freshwater lakes and rivers instead of the ocean, 
Specifically, a large star burning like a torch falls from the sky and poisons a third of the water supply. Revelation 8 verses 12 and 13. Then the fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, as well as a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, as well as a third of the night. Then I looked and heard an eagle flying in midair, calling out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the other trumpet blasts of the three angels who are yet to sound. After the judgment of the fourth trumpet, John observes a special warning given by an eagle flying through the sky. This eagle cries out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of what will happen when the last three angels sound their trumpets. For this reason, the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpets are referred to as the three woes. The fifth trumpet, the angel of the abyss, serves as king of these demonic locusts. In Hebrew, he is known as Abaddon, and in Greek, as Apollyon, which means destroyer. These beings will be given authority to torture anyone who does not have the seal of God. The pain they will cause will be so excruciating that the sufferers will wish to die. Abaddon Apollyon is the ruler of the abyss and king of these demonic locusts. The sixth trumpet, the sixth trumpet, and the second woe heralds the arrival of another demonic horde. When the sixth trumpet sounds, a voice from the altar of God requests the release of the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These four evil angels command a supernatural cavalry of tens of thousands to kill a third of mankind. The seventh trumpet. Then the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Revelation 11 verse 15. The judgments of the seven trumpets come to an end. Everything is prepared for the seven angels with the seven bowls of God's wrath. These angels are standing inside the now open temple, ready to move forward and bring the final judgments upon the earth. The Seven Bowls of Revelation The concept of the bowls, often referred to as the bowls of wrath or vials of wrath, is found in the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. Essentially, these bowls are like containers of God's wrath. At this time, people have already done much evil especially under the leadership of someone called the Antichrist. Before the seven bowls are poured out, there is a series of other events and judgments. The first bowl, Revelation 16, begins with a powerful voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of God's wrath. Then the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and foul and painful sores appeared on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second bowl. Following the first bowl, which brought painful sores upon those who had the mark of the beast, the heavens prepared for another significant act. The angel moved forward, in his hand held the bowl filled with a mysterious liquid. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead person, and every living thing in the sea died. The third bowl. The rivers and water springs are not spared either. They too are turned into blood. Water, the essence of life, is transformed into a symbol of death. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. This complete contamination contrasts with the partial pollution of a third of the fresh water shown in Revelation 8. The fourth bowl. It was the time for the fourth bowl. An angel moved forward, holding the next vessel of judgment. The target of this bowl was neither the earth nor the water, but the very sun that lights up the sky. Revelation 16 verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. Suddenly, things began to change. The sun, which had always been a source of light, warmth and sustenance, was given a new and dreadful power. The fifth bowl, under the command of the heavens, the fifth angel departed, directing his bowl not at the seas, mountains, or rivers, but directly at the throne of the beast, the epicenter of wickedness. 
Revelation 16 verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness, and people gnawed their tongues in agony because of their excruciating suffering and severe torment. When this bowl was poured out, it caused the sun to disappear, turning the realm of the beast completely dark. Imagine a world without any light, where it is so dark that you can see nothing. This darkness was not calm or comforting, it felt heavy and left people truly uncomfortable. The profound darkness, however, was just the beginning of their torment. The Sixth Bowl In the hands of the sixth angel was the bowl full of God's judgment. It was clear that this vessel had a divine purpose, and the angel understood the gravity of its content. The entire cosmos seemed to pause in anticipation of what was about to happen. Revelation 16 verse 12 And the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its waters were dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. As the waters of the great river Euphrates dwindled, what used to block the path now became a clear way. The Euphrates River, an extension of the Fertile Crescent area, is a significant landmark in the scriptures and a valuable resource in the Middle East as it flows through Turkey, Syria and Iraq. The Seventh Bowl In the heavens, the scene was dramatic. The seventh angel, with the last bowl of God's punishment, prepared to pour it out. This was not just any bowl, it was like the final chapter of all the judgments that came before it, truly showing how severe and final God's decision was. Revelation 16 verses 1 to 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne of God, saying, It is done, it is finished, the moment has come. The book of Revelation talks about the end of the world in God's final plan, and with each bowl poured, the urgency and severity of God's judgment become clearer. The purpose of the events described is not to cause fear, but to emphasize the significant consequences of a society that rejects its creator. The story presents God's wrath, and the judgments serve as a profound testimony of God's righteous indignation against the wickedness and rebellion of humanity. As each bowl is poured out, the earth experiences unprecedented calamities from painful sores afflicting people, Revelation 16 verse 2, to the sun burning the earth with intense heat, Revelation 16 verse 8. Let us pray, dear Lord, we thank you for your guidance and your protection. We ask for forgiveness for our sins, both known and unknown. We ask that you guide us from now until eternity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.